Our first presenter is Tara Kaufman from St. Mary's Parish in Woodstock. She brought her fan face with her. We told her we would. Yeah, she has, uh, she's on our committee actually. All of us, I can tell you on our committee, are extremely impressed with Tara's passion for evangelization. She's the business manager at St. Mary's Parish in Woodstock. She's been doing that for the last 12 years. But I think it's fair to say, and accurate to say, that her faith leads her to believe that God has great plans and that he can accomplish through each of us if we simply place our desires in the heart of Christ in him and love as Christ has loved. So you will catch her passion from listening to her words. So I invite Tara to come up. If we 
put Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. I like that. I try to remind myself of that. Okay, number one. Trust that the Holy Spirit is at work. It's the Holy Spirit that puts the longing in our hearts for God. The Holy Spirit helps us to see those outside the church. And the Holy Spirit gives us the gifts we need to create opportunities to draw others back. And it's vital that we're open to the Holy Spirit so that God can do things greater than we could ever imagine. So staff, if your pastor has an idea and you think, well, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> versus evangelization versus 
self-preservation. How often are we stuck in just preserving who we are instead of thinking, how can we evangelize? How can we grow? How can we go out? I loved reading this document. And I have some quotes on here from there that I don't have memorized, so I'm going to read to you what Pope Francis wrote. He said, I prefer a church which is bruised, hurting, and dirty because it has been out on the streets rather than a church which is unhealthy from being confined and from clinging to its own security. If something should rightly disturb us and trouble our consciences, it is the fact that so many of your brothers and sisters are living without the strength, light, and consolation born of friendship with Jesus Christ. Without a community of faith to support them without meaning and a goal in life. Pope Francis explains an evangelizing community. An evangelizing community knows that the Lord has taken the initiative. He has loved us first. And therefore, we can move forward, boldly take the initiative, go out to others, seek those who have fallen away, stand at the crossroads, and welcome the outcast. Such a community has an endless desire to show mercy, the fruit of its own experience of the power of the Father's infinite mercy. I was at Mass recently, and one of the prayer intentions was about reaching out to the sheep. And we all answered, Lord, hear our prayer. And I thought, who of us heard that prayer? And who of us felt called, like, yeah, that's what I want. I'm praying for that. That's what I want to do. Does it seem like sometimes we're going through the motions? We all know how to, when to sit, when to stand, when to kneel, when to respond. But do we know our mission? Do our parishioners know our mission? As leaders, we must take time to reflect upon the efforts we need to do to create an evangelizing community that goes forth reaching out with mercy to truly live what we believe. Point four, share stories and listen with love and humility. Everyone has a story to tell. Catholics who have been alienated have stories filled with hurt. Sally Moose, in her book, Inviting Catholics Home, points out the importance of understanding it doesn't matter if the reason they left the church is true or not. Their perception is reality. And so with humility and love, we need to understand that when we hear their stories. She talks about also the fact that us sharing our own stories inspires those outside the church to tell us theirs. I was camping three hours away from here and I met someone who was actually from a church in this area who had been Catholic. And I thought, there's some reason God put her in my path. And so I kind of started asking her some questions, mentioned the Catholic church, where I go to church, and all of a sudden, she opened up and told me her whole story why she had left the church. True or not, she was hurt. But I knew God had us three hours away, even though we lived 15 minutes apart, because she needed to hear and know about God and his love and the truth in the Catholic Church. I have my own story, actually, of drifting away from the Catholic Church. I was raised, I'm the oldest of six, raised in a faithful Catholic family. We went to Mass every Sunday. We never missed. And it wasn't until I went to college and I met a group of Christians. 
Christians who were so filled with joy that I thought, I want that joy that they have. So I got involved in their Bible studies, and I loved it. I learned my very first scripture verse that I ever memorized. Romans 8.28, all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. When I was asked in college, why, well, why do Catholics believe this? Why do they believe that? I couldn't defend my faith, especially now with scripture. So later I met my husband, I was still in college, and guess what? His whole family had left the church. And they had left it for reasons that I believe they didn't see Christ alive in their parish. And a lot of it did have to do with a priest that they had had that didn't, that probably added to the fact that there wasn't as much love and joy in the congregation. And so when I met him, I didn't know how to defend my faith. I went to Mass until we were married, and then I just went to Mass with him and his family because I didn't know it any better. And you know what? It was the Holy Spirit that called me back to the Catholic Church. Because we were going to their church service and it hit me. They were receiving communion with like a piece of bread and grape juice. And I thought, I can't do that. I was craving the Eucharist. And I didn't even, I didn't really know why. So I started to look and do some research and actually found out, which all you guys know, I'm sure, obviously, the early church fathers all believed in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I didn't know that. And in the scripture, Jesus says, you must eat my body and drink my blood over and over again. And how is that possible? At the last supper, he shows us that. I would have loved to have known that in college, to be able to answer those people say, why do you believe in that? I'd be like, look, look, it's right here. And I did, I did. And you know, so sometimes I look back and I think, well, it was really sad that I had to go outside the church. But you know what? God has a perfect plan. And through that, my father-in-law's come back to the church, my mother-in-law. It's been so beautiful, and I get to see how God uses our journey to bring other people back. Again, we all have faith stories. Think about your neighbor who was raised Catholic, but drifted away from the church because of the busyness of life. Your daughter or son who had great hopes of marriage only to have all those desires crushed with the reality of divorce. Your brother or sister who stopped attending mass because they disagreed with a church teaching. Think about the person that you know was offended by someone in the church. And think about all the people you walk by, you drive by, you don't know them, but they have a story, too. There are approximately 20 million inactive Catholics in the United States. How many would consider coming back to the church? Well, our own Dr. Cieslik, in a study after the Catholics Come Home initiative, reported that only 23% of those not returning to the church at that time would not, said they would never. So that leaves 77% willing to consider to come back. So I've given you four points to ponder when you're planning your outreach efforts. Now I'm going to give you five examples of ways we have reached out at St. Mary's for alienated and inactive Catholics. Our night of prayer. This was um, something that we did after the... I see my... <laughs> I think I'm going too long, I guess. Three minutes. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Dang, yeah, that really is. Um, the Night of Prayer. So, Chicago Night Fever, if you've heard that, a holy name cathedral. Uh, something beautiful that we invited everyone, all are welcome. We really communicated that through Facebook and the ads to let people know that they didn't have to be Catholic and it didn't matter how long they've been away from the church, that they can come to this Night of Prayer. And I want to give a Holy Spirit example. At our last one on Divine Mercy Sunday, we didn't want the spotlight out in front to 
giant monstrance. So Deacon, our Deacon had an idea, he said, let's put it on the back. And when he did, we were amazed, because look what happened. It circled the Lord, and we didn't know, we couldn't have planned that. So again, it's so neat to see how the Holy Spirit can work in even little details like that. Steubenville, I know you guys all know this, but we've used this to draw people back to the Catholic Church. And the way we've done that is we've reduced the price. It's only $99. But we've done that because if you think about it, the Catholics that are inactive, they're not going to send their kids here for full cost. They're not going to have their kids participate in fundraisers and things like that. So we created it so that they could come. In this past year, we took 156 students and 24 chaperones. It's amazing what the Lord can do. And I could go on and on about what he has done through these kids and then reaching their parents. God moments. We just started this, our new principal at our school. We're having our school children recognize and see God's presence in their lives and tell their teachers and our principal sharing that over the intercom and at the school mass so that they can start to recognize God, his presence. We have these school children five days a week. We could be really putting together some great witnesses for Christ. A video, create a video. Sally News and Catholics, uh, Inviting Catholics Home talks about, and I won't play this video because we don't have time, but talks about if we create a video, we can communicate that people outside the church are not just welcome, but they're wanted. We can share stories, we can put pictures, we can put that out there because people are online all the time. So creating a video to let people know you are, you not only you are welcome, you are wanted. Other programs we've done, when I was in evangelization before being the business manager, I created a homecoming week. So we had a homecoming week in the fall with all the different events of speakers coming talking about why we do what we do in the Catholic Church, opportunity for reconciliation, testimonies of people coming back. We had a program, the book, The Prodigal You Love, some information will be on the sheet, Catholics Returning Home, program Father Louis is now working on, outreach programs. Uh, we've talked about some of our about cats, uh, the outreach programs, our St. Vincent de Paul. I just heard one of our parishioners, she goes out and she gives them the sacred heart of Jesus, and she says, just say, I love you, Jesus, every time. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and actually, you know what? That it, oh, the, well, the one last thing, and we're not going to get to see Pope Francis' video, but I'll conclude with this. Another Holy Spirit day. On September 1st, I was like, I really got to start thinking about this speech. And I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I didn't really finish until like yesterday. But <laughs> September 1st, I was like, I should go online and figure out what I'm going to do. And on my Facebook feed, this suggested post came up with Pope Francis. His prayer intention for September was for the parishes and the, at the service of mission. And it was a great one half minute video that I can't show you, but it, it shows us, and I'm so excited because he's praying all month for what we're doing right here, what we're trying to do, to focus on our mission. And he prayed that we can be more than just offices, that we can go out in love. And so I just want to shout out to my St. Mary's staff, because I love you guys, and I believe that we are more than just a parish office. And I couldn't do what I do without you. And I want you to know that. And I want all of us to pray for each other. That we embrace the mission. That we embrace the heart of Christ. That we see and love people the way God sees them. And that we are filled with a joy to which nothing can ever compare. Thank you.